I want this to do a review of this one fairly early in the year because otherwise it's just going to get pushed further and further back and it just won't happen like my whiskey of the year 2021 which um yeah I'll let you know how the review of that one's going but this whiskey here it got the top spot in my whiskey advent calendar leaderboard this year or last year it got an honourable mention in the Whiskey of the Year 2022 video, and it's one of my favourite whiskies that I've had in a long time. This is the Spice King 12-year-old from Weems Malts. There are several different versions of this at different strengths, some no age statement. This one that I've got here is the 12-year-old version at 52%, and I love it. The only criticism that I've got of this bottle of whiskey is that my bottle appears to have a leak in it. Look, see that? It's wet. It just keeps going down on its own. No? Don't believe me? Weems Malts is... It's, they're an independent bottler and they were founded in 2005 and they're, they're based near Edinburgh and they have a lot of different releases, different expressions. This particular expression is 52% ABV and it's a vatting of 21 hogsheads of whiskey from Highland Park and Bunnahaven. This release states non-chill filtered on the website. I don't actually think it says anything on the bottle or the box, which is disappointing, but hopefully they'll sort that out and get that information on the label soon, so we've got that guarantee. But all in all, I think this is a fantastic whiskey. And one thing, one other thing that I want to show you, I'm just going to clear the condensation off this bottle so you can hopefully get a good view. Just to show how non-chill filtered this whiskey is, can you see the bottom of the bottle there? There's a little, looks like a stain. That's not on the bottom of the glass. That's not on the outside. That is barrel char. So if I tip that a little bit, I don't know if that's done anything. Mm. I think it's moving around a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that. I can barely see it on my monitor here. I, I think you can see a little bit of a swell there. But that is a sign that they have left all the good stuff in this whiskey. And I can see it moving around there. All the good stuff. All of the oils and fats and esters and flavours have been left in this whiskey because they've barely even taken the detritus from the barrel out of this one. It's a natural, flavorful product. So obviously I've been through this one once already in the advent calendar, but since then I've obviously bought the whole bottle and I've done some more critical tasting, taking a little bit more time with it. So let's get some in the glass and see what it's like. Spoiler, it's good. It's good stuff. Honest, well-made, whiskey. On the nose I'm getting a strong note of caramel and cough sweets. There is a hint of smoke on this one but it's really not a peat bomb. I'd say that the level of peat that you get in this it's probably slightly less than what you'd expect from your average like Highland Park 12. A little bit less than that. What you have got though, and I remember this being one of the things that I picked up on when I tasted this blind in the advent calendar, is a beautiful, sharp, fruity, bright, lemony, malty character. There's also a beautiful, firm oakiness on this one, and a cereal dryness, without too much in the way of a real oak spice component to this one. And I think with time, if you leave this in the glass for a few minutes, get some some warmth into it, get some air into the glass so it opens up and develops, I think that that bright lemony malt sort of transforms into a really nice, bright Love Hearts fruity maltiness. So Love Hearts are those chalky, sherbety sweets that at least we have in here in the UK. But it sort of develops into a, a slightly floral, confectionery, sherbety, fizzy, epivescent note. But I really like whiskies of this style, and I really like blended malts for this. That It seems like blended malts, they quite often highlight the base spirit. I guess that's because the blenders are concentrating on the malt components. They don't want things to be too covered up by casks. 
and I suspect that might be why this is matured in 21 hogsheads because they're going to be probably economical but good quality casks possibly bourbon casks that have been stripped down and reassembled into hogsheads because with this and a lot of blended malts it's all about the spirit that goes in rather than covering it up with px or red wine or god knows what and i like that i think and i hope that a lot of you guys agree with me that whiskey should be about the spirit what comes off the still technically by law what comes off the still has to have a large impact on the flavor whiskey by its legal definition has to be defined by the distillate and I really like whiskies where they let that spirit that comes off the still have a say in the final flavor profile and this one definitely does so let's see how it tastes on the palate refined and sharp and spirity getting more of that caramel and light spicy peat and more of that astringent lemon note so like a dry slightly astringent almost bitter lemoniness also getting a bit of tangerine on the palate so again a sharp citrus note more love hearts fruity maltiness some of that caramel coming back and like a, a caramel caramac caramel chocolate note as well as a little bit of nuttiness on the late palate it's going to have one more sip because i really like it and to have a look at the finish all in the interests of science so on the finish really those same flavors following through caramel caramac maltiness a little bit of a, a slightly medicinal cough candy note and a, a slight farmy peatiness so like I said before on the advent calendar blind tasting, this is not exactly what I would call spicy. For a whiskey called Spice King, this doesn't have a lot of obvious wood spice, which I'm really glad about. But I do think that this is an incredibly good whiskey. And if there's any of this stuff left, I'll show you the label again. If you can find this one, the 12 year old version at 52%, it's a no brainer really. I bought this for, I think, well under 40 quid. And it's beautiful whiskey at that price. And it really shows what great things you can do with a blended malt. I think I do get what they're talking about with the name, calling this Spice King. But I think personally, I'll probably call it more of a dry, astringent oakiness rather than actual spice. I probably wouldn't even say that this is as spicy or even as oaky as like the Isle of Rasse RO2 release, if you've had that one. That one they use, I can't remember, they use some rye casks and I think some chinkapin oak. And that has more oakiness and more spice than this does. And in this one there's certainly no, there's none of that gingery raw virgin oak note. Which is probably what I would have expected from this if I hadn't tried it. As it is, I think this is a great whiskey for anyone that likes their spirit dominated, sharp, spirit spirity in a good way blended malts i think it's also a really good whiskey for anyone that really enjoys highland park because it's i think that the highland park is more prominent than this than the bunahaven i think this is probably the best young highland park that i've ever had i think this stuff is better even at the lower strength than the highland park cask strength release and i think that it's just really good whiskey for anyone that likes that more distillate driven style of whiskey and anyone that likes their whiskey with a slightly higher ABV without paying too much. Speaking of the Bunnahaven component in this, because if you have a look online, they don't say directly on the website or the label, but if you do some digging, you'll see that this is said to be a mix of Highland Park and Bunnahaven. The Bunnahaven fruity malt quality, I think it is there in this one, but without that trademark Bunnahaven sherry component, I think you really have to go looking for those telltale Bunnahaven house style notes which honestly in my opinion adds even more fun to this whiskey because being a blend of two distillates it gives us a really great opportunity for some detective work unraveling which flavor notes are coming from where so yeah 
absolutely well deserved the top spot on the, the Whiskey Advent Calendar leaderboard. And I think when you consider how good this stuff is and the intensity of the flavours and the very reasonable price, I think this one, it could well have been my Whiskey of the Year 2022, may even be my Whiskey of the Year 2023, if I can remember it by then. Thanks for watching, let me know what you think of this one, and very interested to hear if you've had any other products from Weems Malts, what do you think of them? Because after trying this one, obviously I'm not buying any bottles this year, but if I were going to buy another bottle, I think that Weems Malts have a good chance of getting another purchase from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Oh, oh, oh.